What's up guys, my name is Gabe and welcome into the Trojan Blade. Was not planning on uploading this Saturday night, but shout out to former USC wideout Big Mike Williams who was on campus for practice today. There was a big scrimmage. Of course, it's Lincoln Riley, it's USC in 2024. The media is not allowed to be in there recording anything. But what we did get was a picture posted by Mike Williams himself that has given us some insights on the starting lineup. It's a 1v1 picture of the offense and defense. And of course, I find it absolutely fascinating. This is my bread and butter. This is what I live for. And it is what we are talking about tonight. But guys, we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So if you are enjoying the content, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It would really mean the world to me. We are growing at a rapid pace and it would truly be an honor for me to welcome you into this growing community. Again, we just launched the Trojan Blade Discord. It's completely free. The link is down in the description. Head over there, talk some SC football. We have a lot of fun. But with all of that out of the way, guys, let's get into this picture. Okay, so this is the picture as a whole, but I do want to zoom in. We're going to work left to right here and really look at who's out here on the field. So over here on the far left, you have Jacoby Lane and Carlos Nicholson. This is big on big. This is a great matchup, I'm sure, to watch him practice every single day. Really no surprise there. Jacoby is easily my pick to be the team's leading wideout this year. And to Carlos Nicholson coming over from Mississippi State with a ton of experience, six foot three, big frame, really physical, really mature guy. I think he's locked in to be a starter as well. So again, not really a surprise there. Heading over to our matchup in the slot, we have Makai Lemon against Prophet Brown. So I think it was today, Lincoln Riley was actually talking about how Prophet Brown has made some big strides and is actually earning a role on this team. I thought he played some good ball last year, but seeing him here, he is first team nickel going up against Makai Lemon. Again, I wouldn't read too much into the wideouts as they rotate so, so much in this Lincoln Riley offense. So whether it's Zachariah or Makai, these guys are going to be rotating in and swapping out a ton. But seeing Prophet Brown in that nickel spot, he must be having a fantastic camp. I obviously did not have him as a starter on this team. And of course, this doesn't mean he'll be a starter when we play LSU. But to have him running with the ones at this stage in spring ball, that's obviously a fantastic development for him. But Shifting over here to the right, I want to focus on this guy right here. To me, that looks closest to the number 18, and that would be true freshman Joey Olsen running with the first team. Now, that is obviously extraordinary. First off, he didn't play traditional tight end in high school, but making the jump from tight end in high school to college is one of the hardest jumps to make. But you see him lining up right there. Now, when you talk about Joey Olsen, this is as natural a pass catcher as you're going to see, especially at the tight end position. Phenomenal route runner, insane hands. The dude catches everything thrown his way. He is also a big time threat after the catch, which as big a fan as I am a late McCree, that's a dynamic in our offense we haven't had these last few years. I mean, Joey can house it from a lot of spots on the field. He's a big time athlete. And when he was in high school, he was pretty lanky. But man, he has put on some serious size since getting to SC. And the fact that he's running with the first team as a tight end and as a true freshman is absolutely insane for him. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know how big a fan I am of his game. So I shouldn't be too surprised to see this, but anytime you have a true freshman tight end that has a chance to make an impact, I mean, it's a pretty big deal. So before we go any further and talk about specific players, I want to talk about this formation for a second. This is an example of that 2-4-5 that we will be seeing this year. You obviously have the two down interior linemen here and here. You have the two stand-up defensive ends right here and over here. You have the two backers in the middle there, two safeties, two corners, and a nickel. So yeah, we are going to be seeing a lot of that this year. But talking about who's out there on the defensive side of the ball, you have Jamil Muhammad at this one stand-up spot here. Kamari Ramsey is obviously one of the safeties. Your two backers are Easton Mascarinus Arnold and Mason Cobb. Now, I thought for sure we would be seeing Eric Gentry with the ones, but new USC linebacker coach Matt Enns has been speaking very, very highly of Mason. So if he's out there with the ones, he's earned that spot. It's not because of what he did at Oklahoma State. It's because he's having a good camp. So honestly, like to see that. Again, Mason was a productive player. A lot of people like to forget that. Last year was bad, not denying that at all. He was not good enough. He'll be the first to admit that. A lot of that was not his fault. But if anyone is due for a bounce back year, it's him. Now, the question here is who are these three other defensive linemen? I believe that this is Bear Alexander right here in the middle. But who is this on the right of Easton? It looks like it could be Elijah Hughes. Could it be Kobe Pepe? I don't really know. Completely guessing there. And the other question is who's lined up on the right of Mason Cobb? Now that does look to be a very tall body. Is that Anthony Lucas? That was my first guess. Please let me know what you think down below. Obviously can't know for sure, but give me your best guess. Now shifting to the offense, you have Elijah Page and Emmanuel Pregnon as your left tackle, left guard combo. I see a lot of USC fans down on Pregnon. I thought he got better and better as the year went along. Remember he came into camp late. He was hurt in camp as well. 
that offensive line never gelled, when the rest of the guys around you aren't gelling, aren't on the same page, it's going to make your job that much harder. So if he can pick up where he left off, I think we're going to be in great shape there. You have Jonah Monheim at center. We can't see who the right guard is. I would guess it's Alani Noah, but again, it's just a guess. And then you have Mason Murphy running right tackle. Now, hopefully Mason's taken some big steps. He's a very talented guy. But with a fair amount of confidence, I can say that the starting right tackle of the 2024 USC Trojans is not on the roster currently. We're going to be shopping in the portal, and the guy that's running that right tackle spot is going to be coming in from somewhere else, I believe. And in the Trojan backfield, you have Miller Moss, no shock there. And the running back in this picture is Woody Marks. Again, that is to be expected. He is the veteran. He's a very solid pass blocker. He can catch the ball. He can do everything you want. Do I think Quentin Joyner is going to get a lot of carries this year? Yes, I do. I do think he'll be featured more and more as the year goes on. But earlier in the season, in those big spots against LSU, against Michigan, I would expect to see the veteran Marks get the bulk of the carries. Now, shifting over to the far right side here, unfortunately, we cannot see the other safety and corner. They're out of the frame, which sucks. Of course, my best guess would be Akili Arnold and Marcellus Williams. With the news that John Humphrey's having surgery that's ending his spring and with how well Sellis has been doing you would have to think it's him and that other safety spot could one of them be injured? I don't know. I know there's some talks that one of the DBs is injured, but Akili Arnold or Jalen Smith would be my guess there. And this other wide out here, I think that's the number 10. And judging that the guy's wearing short socks that has Kyron Hudson all over it, it just looks like him. So I'm going to assume that that is him. The number is a little blurry, but to me that for sure just looks like Kyron, which what I've heard coming from camp is that the coaches are very, very happy with Kyron and his progress. They trust him. They know what to expect from him. But of course, with wideouts, do not read too much into it because they rotate more than any spot on the field. But yeah, guys, overall, some really interesting stuff. I did not expect Joey Olsen to be running first team tight end this early into his career. But man, he's a special talent, a special receiving threat. And man, I am expecting big things from him this year. But guys, if I missed anything in this photo, please let me know down below. If you have thoughts on any of the starting positions, please let me know that as well. I always love to hear what you guys have to say. And if you did happen to enjoy this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. You're all awesome. And as always, take care and fight on.